Kerala, Andhra. Okay, any other person? Kerala. All right. Okay. So fine. So we'll first uh, get to understand uh, a few things. How many people from sociology background already? Under graduation, post graduation. Okay. Fine. How many post graduates in general? In general, PG. Anyone from uh, medical background, medical, paramedical, okay, law, okay, then uh, science, pure science backgrounds, physics, chemistry, botany, zoology, okay, math, statistics, okay, literature backgrounds. Okay, agri, horticulture, forestry, okay, management, commerce, okay, all right, any other humanities background other than sociology, any other humanities? Okay, arts, pure arts, okay, all right, okay, fine. So rest is, okay, fine. So let's set some ground rules before we start the class. So five, we start. Today, because uh, the login issues, etc., we were just waiting for the students to come in. We started a few minutes a little late, but usually, dot five, we will start the class. So, five to six thirty, uh, six twenty, six thirty, we'll have the first session, and then you'll have a ten minute break. And ten minute break, once it's done, we'll have the second half of the class. So, usually, whatever we discuss in the class, in the flow of the class, if you have any doubts, make a, make a note of that. We will not be doing it then and there because we have to go in a flow. We have to complete the portions also. And so, first half we will do and then if there are any doubts, I will handle the doubts during that particular break. Those students who want to take the break, you can leave the premises and come back within the 10 minutes. And then at the end of the session, if there are any other queries, we will I will address all your queries, okay. So, for the students who are attending online also, the same goes. We will be starting and we will be going in this way. In between the session, we will have one doubt clarification and in the end, we will be having one doubt clarification. Subsequently, I would want to have uh, like once this mains etc. is done, no? we will look to have some session previously itself so that if you have any uh, anything as doubts to ask from the previous day class, you can come a little early. And then you can ask, I would want to leave at 7.30, okay, because after I go home, I have some work with regard to mains, candidates and all that. And so I would prefer to leave once the class is done. I would want to address all your queries, if there is any, once you read about it, before we start the class, so we can have before the start of the class and then in between the class and then five minutes before we wind up, I will once again ask your doubts, whether you have any doubts, you can clarify your doubts, all right. So mostly by 4 o'clock, I'll be available at my place in the fifth floor, okay. So there is this library, my, I'm seated there. So you can come and ask your queries. After one or two weeks, I'll also station, uh, you know, I'll give you the uh, contact details of your mentors, your evaluators, etc. So once that thing starts, we'll also start the mentoring process for you. So those candidates who have any doubts, you can approach them as well, all right. So morning. I will not be available in this premises. I will be in the mains building. That's in the Moksha building. It's in another part, uh, another road. Okay, it's like close to one kilometer from here. And then afternoons is when I come here. And uh, uh, so if you come searching for me in the morning, I'll not be available in this building. So if you want to meet me, it would be good if you can come after 4 o'clock. Usually I'll be there on all weekdays. 
at this time you can come and you can meet me before the sessions all right so this is how we will be having our process all right so let's start with the session tomorrow you will be given uh, i'll post the tele in the telegram group i'll be posting your syllabus everything i'll be posting it on to that and then we will be having a detailed discussion on that as well so today we will start with what all is there in the subject what all we have to prepare everything the basics we will be doing the fundamentals we will be doing and then we will be proceeding with the weightage of each and every unit and then you will be required to make notes about everything all right so next is you you are required to carry a notebook or some sheets of paper to make class notes it's mandatory to make class notes because just by listening to the class and remembering whatever is there in the class will not be enough when you're reading again for the main examination so i would want you to make your own notes and religiously write down everything that we are discussing in the class so class notes which will be like certain things i will be telling you to write down certain things whatever i'm writing on the board the expectation is you should pass it on to your notebook so have a proper notebook for that when you are maintaining a notebook certain things like having one notebook to write all the class notes and ensuring to have something like an index page for your class notes or the sheets of paper onto which you are writing it would be recommended in case you are making any uh, notes on your tab or your devices or whatever it is ensure that you are handwriting it because it's writing is important don't type your notes because if you are typing it is not going to give you any writing practice as such so the class notes would be a way in which you are ensuring that you are continuing with the writing practice as such all right so let's start with sociology paper 1 of sociology it is for 250 marks okay and this 250 marks it is divided into two sections section a and section b so this 250 marks we will be writing it as five questions out of eight questions that they give us five questions out of eight questions that they give us that means there is choice okay so how is the structure of the question paper so you have question number 1 it has a b c d e each question for 10 marks so 5 question into 10 marks 50 marks okay this is compulsory this compulsory all of us we have to write this particular question so when we say question means the sub part of the question is also referred as a question that means if we say question number 1 means question number 1 has five sub parts and so all the sub parts or sub sections are what we are referring as the question so suppose you write question 1a that means you have attempted this question and it is a part of the compulsory you have to write it same like you have this section a in section b of the question paper it will be called as 5 so 5 a b c d e is also compulsory it's also compulsory so again this is also 10 mark questions 50 marks from here okay so out of the 250 mark 100 mark is common to all students who are writing from sociology option okay so 100 mark this 50 and that 
So, 100 mark is common. All right. Next is the choice questions that we have. So, question 2, A, B, C, 3, A, B, C, 4, A, B, C. Similarly, here in section B, 6, A, B, C, 7, A, B, C, 8, A, B, C. Alright? Now in this, usually until last year, until 2022 means A question is 20 mark, B question is 20 mark, C question is 10 mark. All same. Okay? So now, 5 questions out of the 8 questions that are given to us, we have to write. Okay? So question number 1 is common to all. Question 5 is common to all. That means I have completed 2 questions out of the 5 questions. Now I have to choose 3 questions. I have to choose 3 questions from what? 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8. I have to choose the question. So, how should I choose the question? There is a rule. What is the rule is? Minimum 1, maximum 2 from every section. Okay? Leave the compulsory aside. Leave the compulsory aside. Compulsory don't even bring into picture. Other than compulsory, for the remaining 3 question, minimum 1 question from a section Maximum 2 questions from a section. That means from section A, I can choose. If I choose one question, one question means 2, 3 or 4, any one out of this. If I am choosing only one, that means section B, 2 questions I have to write. So, if I take one question from here, then I have to take 2 questions from here. Okay? Or if I am taking two questions from here, I can take only one question from here. Okay? So now the doubt. Ma'am, what if I write the three questions in one section only? Okay? Suppose if I write like that, what will happen? UPSC will consider it in chronological order. Chronological order means ascending order they will consider. So, what they will, now you imagine, you have written 1 and 5, you have written it compulsory. And then 2, 3, 4, at the time you have written. So, totally you have written 5 question. Imagine, you have written 5 question totally and you have done like this, you have done a mistake only. So, what UPSC will consider is, they will consider 2 and 3 and if you have written 4 also, they will put 0 for 4. It is not considered. They will take it in the order of ascending order in your paper. This is how they will take. Okay? This is how they will. Suppose you have written it here. That is, here you have written first question. And then you have left everything blank. And in section B, you have written three questions. 6, 7 and 8 come fully you have written. Then what they will do? Question 6 and question 7 they will consider. And 8 they will put 0. They will put 0. Okay? Now, another doubt. Another doubt is, ma'am, I have written 2A and then I have written in 3B. If I write A means 2 is fully considered. You write A or B or C, 2 is fully considered. You leave other 2 blank also, 2 is fully considered. That means, full question only will be considered even if you write sub part. You write only 1 or you write 2 or you write 3 out of 3 in that big question, it, they will consider it as full question only. So, some students have previously done this mistake. That's why beginning itself I am telling. What they have done is, when they turn the page in the booklet, answer booklet, 
three B they will be writing, but they will turn it fast. And so what will happen is they are writing the second part of the answer in another question. So literally what will happen? We don't have the time. In the end we are realizing we have done a mistake, we score out. But then what happens? I don't have space to write another question. That is the reason why UPSC has started numbering every page. If before you write every page, what is the number? After 90, next 20 page only is there. One, one second, always proactive. You have to check before you start writing. So this is what is expected out of you, okay? So five questions we have to write. Every sub part is also considered as the big question only. You write any one part of the question also, it is considered that entire question you have attempted, okay? Now another doubt. Ma'am, will they put penalty mark for me? UPSC has a habit of giving 3-0 mark as penalty, okay? Penalty mark is usually not given. It is not given for these kind of mistakes. Penalty mark is given for certain other kind of mistakes which I will tell you subsequently, okay? Penalty mark, they are giving some candidates. You imagine one mark itself is going to change our destiny. One question itself we are leaving means where we will not even go to interview. We are again going to be in the same cycle of repeating the exam. Only. This is how it usually happens. All right. So are you able to follow? So five questions that we are going to write. Two questions are compulsory. Question number one and question number five is compulsory. Ma'am, they said compulsory. What if I don't write the compulsory question? You will not get mark for that. That's all. You don't write means no mark. It is like in prelims, you leave a question means that question is not considered. What you write will be considered. What you don't write, they will put zero mark for that. That's all. Okay? Is it understood? Then remaining questions, we are going to write. We have to write. So whatever you don't write, you won't get the mark for it. And if you make a mistake, what is considered in ascending order, that will be the question which is going to be considered. Sub part is also considered as a question. So how we will, how is this placed in the first paper? Usually, section A of paper 1 will have unit 1 to 5. Okay? And section B of paper 1 will have unit 6 to 10. have unit 6 to 10. Okay? That means what? We can't like semester exam skip and all and go. We have to study. Why ma'am? I can take two questions from here. No. I can write only one question from that. I can leave off that question. No. Now I will tell you why. Compulsory questions will come from every unit. Order may be or may not be the same order. So, we can't skip portions. Every syllabus we have to study so that we are having a competitive edge. Only then we can answer the compulsory questions. Sometimes what they do is two units they will ask questions. It is possible. But every unit they will touch only and they will leave. Paper 2 sometimes one or two sentences they will leave off in the question. But paper 1 no possibility. Usually they will ask. So this is the reason why we cannot skip any portions. We have to study at least some basic minimum we have to study. Alright. Are you getting it? So section A as per the last 7 years trend. Unit 1 to 5 is what is coming. And section B it is unit 6 to 10. This is what it is. This is the order of the paper. Alright. So now we will see. What is there in each of these units? And then detailedly we will see it tomorrow. Okay? Alright? Unit 1. So unit 1, it is the basics of sociology or the emergence of sociology. This unit 1, mark is... I am going to give you the mark weightage of each of the unit. Alright. So what you can do is, you may be, you make a table. 
in a table you write down the mark weightage it will be easy for you to remember unit 1 20 to 30 marks unit 1 20 to 30 marks unit 2 similar unit 3 it is newly becoming important 2020 2021 2022 unit 3 is rising in its importance so it is like trending unit so trending unit means the weightage can go up anytime so as of now it is on an average 30 marks Unit 4, fifty to 80 mark. Unit 4, 50 to 80 mark. Unit 5, again 50 to 80 mark. Okay. So, some words, some keywords from the header of the syllabus, you will have to internalize. Internalize means, first thing, unlike in prelims, in main examination, certain words in the syllabus, if we remember it in a logical way, it will help us to develop what is called as sociological perspective. So, some Shortcuts are there in how people refer to each of these units and you can remember that shortcuts, alright. So, unit 1, say emergence of sociology. Question which comes from unit 1 will somehow get connected to how sociology became a subject. Wherever they go, finally, that's how the question will get. It will come. Okay. So, the word emergence is the most important word here. In unit 2, the word called as research methodology. Okay. Research methodology or sociology as a science. Now, in the second unit, how to think in sociology, how different people thought in sociology is what is second unit. So, methodology means way of thinking, okay, it means way of thinking. Unit 3. So, I have a way of thinking in unit 3, it is like technique to think, okay, technique to think. So, I have a way of thinking and how do I apply that way of thinking? So, it is an application unit. So, application means I am thinking how to do research in sociology, how exactly to do that research. I have a way of thinking, but how do I implement that way of thinking? Okay, let me tell it to you in practical terms. You would have heard about a word called as policy. You have heard about a word called policy. So, what is a policy? 
policy is a guideline of how you have to how you have to do something for the society okay policy gives you a way of thinking right have you heard about the word scheme so scheme means how to implement the policy is called as a scheme okay now again just go to your polity syllabus constitution you just go you have something called as fundamental rights you have something called as dpsp okay so i have something called as right to expression now how will a right to expression actually come to a person when a person is expressing that way how they express i am expressing through movie i am expressing through song i am expressing through speech so that's nothing but an implementation so a dpsp or a fundamental right gives the backing for a policy implementing a policy i will do it through a scheme so i have a policy for i want to do women empowerment child empowerment i will implement it through a beti bachao so beti bachao will be a scheme in that scheme i will try to implement a policy so sometimes it's a policy some sometimes it is a implementation of a fundamental right sometimes it's an implementation of a dpsp like that unit 2 will be giving me like a policy thing way to think unit 3 will be telling me how to do it it is like a scheme how to do it in sociology okay right so that's what is unit 3 unit 4 is thinkers sociological thought so in the syllabus they have given us six thinkers okay three thinkers of european origin and three thinkers from american sociology so totally six thinkers are mentioned in the syllabus so what is this thinker okay so in the second unit we spoke that there is a way of thinking so who gave this way of thinking these people gave that way of thinking okay so these people gave that way of thinking but other people also adapted that way of thinking and there will be many other people also so commonly a way of thinking started by someone started given by someone that someone is called as a thinker from whom that idea comes that's what is called as a thinker so these are the people who created sociology or who contributed to sociology and who made the syllabus of sociology and later on other people they added more and more content to sociology okay so these are the founding people these are the people who are major contributors so out of the so many people most important six people they have taken and they have given it to us in the syllabus all right so this unit till this unit it is exclusive exclusive means only in paper 1 we are having okay that means it is of world level it is of common level there is nothing in terms of indian application and all that here from the fifth unit everything becomes applicative everything becomes connected to indian society everything gets connected to what you are having around you okay so fifth unit is called as stratification so what is stratification right in school level you would have studied something called as layers of atmosphere yes so what did you study there is something called as troposphere something where called as stratosphere so your planes will fly in the stratosphere then there is something called as mesosphere exosphere like that similarly when you read in geography you will be reading about interior of the earth so you will say that 
there is a core, there is a mantle, there is a crust. So, interior most places the core part. All right. So, based on that and all, we have watched a lot of movies, interior of the earth and all people go, it's a high temperature regions and all that. And recently also, we've read that uh, there is the Suryayan which India is planning, there is the Chandrayaan. So, previously we'll say, we, I want to, I'll bring you the sun, I'll bring you the moon when we make promises in love. Isn't it? So, today it is becoming practically applicable that we want to identify, we want to explore these regions. So, what are we telling? We are saying that there are many layers, right? Like that in a society, the layers of a society is called as strata of the society. That's called as stratification. I put people into different layers or people automatically get into different layers based on various things. So, what puts people into various layers, all right? So, you take a common thing, You've, we've all seen about fruits, vegetables and all that. Everything has an inner layer, it has an outer layer and each of it tastes very different, isn't it? Similarly, you would have heard about how onions have a lot of layers and then you peel every layer, it gives a different perspective. Similarly, people also have different layers, isn't it? So, we have some layer which we show to only close friends something for people whom we don't know like that. So, in the society, what are all the layers that people use is say five layers which they have given to us in the syllabus. Class, class means based on your economic position, not this class, okay. Class for us in sociology means a group of people who are having a common economic position. So, what words we generally use? We will say, I am all from middle class family. Yeah. I am all from rich family. Like this, you know, we tell some words, no? So, rich, middle class, poor, those words and all come from where? It comes from the word class. This is one strata, one type of or one dimension of stratification. Next is religion, okay. So, religion as such they have not given, they have given it as a word called ethnicity. What all will come under ethnicity, language, religion, culture is a very broad word. We get culture from everything, okay. So, we will shelf the word culture, we will tell the core words here, it is a good thing. So, can I get culture from my religion? Can I get, that means, yes, that gives us a larger question about what is culture, we will come to it, okay. So, we have to discuss what is culture. So, ethnicity means you will have caste, religion, language, tribal identity. Caste, religion, religion, tribal identity, language, all that will come under ethnicity, okay. It will make me what is called as an ethnic group. When I say something is an ethnic group means I have a common religion or I have a common language or I have a common caste identity or I have a common nationality. So, ethnicity can come from caste, religion, tribal identity, language identity or nationality. It can come from that, okay. What another dimension is there? Gender is another dimension. So, 
तो मेन विमेन जेंडर फ्लूड ट्रांस सो आई कैन बी ट्रांस सेक्शुअल I can be a transgender or I can be a gender fluid person. That means I will have a floating gender identity. It can be anything. All right. So these are all the words which are contemporary words, which means previously scholars only used to study men and women. So gender studies means primarily it will be only women based studies, men based studies. That's all. But latest we can see last ten years a lot of contribution coming in from these dimensions. Okay, what other dimension is there? Race. What other dimension is there? Status. So five dimensions of stratification are given. That means what? People are layered in the society on the basis of they are class on the basis of their caste on the basis of their ethnicity on the basis of their gender so knowingly or unknowingly people are entering into a social ladder nobody created the ladder but automatically the ladder has come so what we are doing we want to consider everybody equal so when you read say for example any world constitution or when you read indian constitution when you read article 14 you read article 15 there are certain words mentioned called as equality and then there is another word mentioned called as discrimination so when you read article 15 and you read article 16 some words will be mentioned nobody should be discriminated on the basis of some five words they would have given so in fact our constitution is also talking about the dimensions of stratification what all words is there race is there religion is there caste is there sex is there place of birth place of birth gives you what nationality okay so what is the difference between usage of the word sex and usage of the word gender very good gender means it is biological so that we use a word male female is called as sex so any application form in any school or any college they will be only asking the sex of the person gender is socially created a male becomes a man a female becomes a woman so when i say man and woman that means how a society wants a man to be how a society wants a woman to be that becomes a gender so we are studying what we have created if we are doing anthropology or we are doing biology we would have studied sex but because we are not into those subjects we are studying gender that is why automatically people are getting layered in the society based on their gender affiliations so what what happens based on any of these things people have a status status means what position so you have a position because of your birth you have a position because of your education you have a position because of your class you have a position because of your skill right so certain things what you have as a status is automatic because you are born certain things what you have as a status you have created that status for yourself with your hard work okay so how all in the society what all kinds of statuses are there what gives a status to a person how the status changes all this is what we will be studying here that means it's very very theoretical plus practical practical means when i say we will be studying some words are all regarding middle class and all that we will be studying but practical application of middle class what we will see say in the present day society 
who is bothered about the rise of tomato prices? Why everybody is talking about tomato? All so many memes have come re regarding uh, tomato prices. Person is opening a gift box instead of a gold ring, tomato is there. People are uh, having uh, pendants on tomatoes. Like this, people are proposing to each other with tomatoes. So what are we trying to signify? It is showing that in the world level, middle class is rising. That means in India itself, middle class is more than 60% of India's population. So it has become a majority. That is why what affects the middle class will be reflected in terms of your ads, in terms of what you get when you repeatedly watch on YouTube, certain things it keeps coming, no? Your metadata which is getting extracted, with that you get repetitive. How? It shows your pattern of consumption. You would have bought something on Amazon for some price range. Similar price range, other products which are there you will be getting. So how is it? So it is capturing your class position, your spending pattern. Because this is influencing so many things in the society. So it is not just the technical aspect that is there. Practically how does, how does this get connected? Okay? So till now, are you okay? Right? That means what? From the fifth unit, our application will start. So when we do in the class also, I will be going in this particular order. As I come to the fifth unit, we will be starting parallelly paper 2. Okay? Fine? So once we do unit 5, Paper 2 correlation begins. That means Indian paper 2, sociology paper 2, like paper 1, is also of the similar kind of a weightage. This is having a correlative portion. It is having a correlative portion. All right. So, unit 5 of paper 1, okay, unit 5 of paper 1, that is stratification. It is connected. It is connected. So once we do this, we are going to do parallelly the same portion in paper 2 of Indian sociology also. Okay. So what we are going to do? Paper 2. So in your notes also write it in this. I want you to study like this. Only then that interconnection and scoring high will come. You don't study as paper 1 separately, paper 2 separately. It is interlinked. Examples have to be interlinked. Okay. So paper It is having a little different language. Okay. What is the language that we use in paper 2? First thing that you need to know is paper 2 is Indian sociology. And here we said unit 1, 2, 3. There we will say unit A, B, C. Like that we will be saying. Okay. interlinked to paper 2, unit B2, B2 unit title is called as caste system. Okay, it is caste system. And weightage of this unit in paper 2, it is 50 to 100 mark. Then, paper 2, same thing, unit 5, it is related to paper 2, B2, and it is also related to paper 2, B4. It is called as social class in India. Are you able to relate to it? So we studied a dimension of stratification, one way of stratification called as caste.
cast in paper two also we are having, we are going to correlate. Another word that we had was class and we are going to correlate that to paper two also what is there. Okay, so same words here and same words there, example alone world level or India level we have to change. That's all. Okay. So what is the weightage of this unit? 10 to 20 mark. Ten to twenty mark. Next is paper one, unit six. Paper one, unit six. Okay, paper 1 unit 6 is what? It is economics and sociology. Okay, so now what is happening is certain things which we are studying in GS, no, which we are studying in other general study subjects, we are going, we are having that included as a part of our syllabus as well. Okay, now the question is why this is all getting included as a part of our syllabus? That is what is the big question. So, to understand that, Okay, turn to your last page of notes. Come from the last. Turn to your last page. Okay. So, we are going to have in our notebook something called as glossary or concept notes or keywords. Some things when we interrelate in the subject. In English, we have a dictionary to refer. But in optional, that kind of dictionaries, it is helpful only for prelims level. In mains level, when we interrelate or we want to find some linking, we will try to put it in our concept notes. So, what you have to do is, whenever you are writing your main notes, when you want to have a concept, you mark it as a concept, either you keep a sticky there, okay, so keep a sticky keep some paper, something to indicate that you have to refer to your concept notes. So, concept notes, what you can do is you can write from the last. So, here you are writing from the beginning, there you write from the end and come. So, what will happen is, once I have to have a reference, I will go to my reference in my concept notes which will be in the end. It is something like an appendix or something like your glossary. Alright. So, more clarity when you want for something as a part of your class notes if you write, it will not be helpful to write an answer, but you want to have an in-depth understanding and so we are going to relate to it. Okay. So, ideally you can do it in your way, but my suggestion to you is from the beginning you keep some kind of indicator. So, today when you go back home and you want to have a reference, you can either keep say different color sticky notes. Okay. So, Every pink color, every orange color, white color, whatever, that will all indicate you have to go to concept notes. So, you can keep some stickies on the top, on the side and all that, no? When you see diaries and all, you just take and flip it, you will be able to go to that particular page. When we do e-notes, it's easy. But when we do hard copy notes, we will have to make a reference, okay? So, what you will have to do? You make an indicator, some arrow, pointer, whatever, that in concept notes, Refer concept page number one, book one, concept page number one, number all your pages, okay, so that it is easier for you. Clear? Are you able to follow? Fine. Now go to the last page. From the last you start writing what I am saying now. So we are trying to understand how the sixth unit why economics has come into sociology, we are trying to understand that and we are trying to go in depth into that, okay.
subjects were there before sociology got created. And from all these subjects, various scholars have given input to create sociology. So, the influence of certain things from every subject has come into sociology. Later on, sociology became like a fusion. So, it became much bigger than each of these subjects. And so, after it is having inputs from various other subjects, it started contributing to other subjects as well. Okay? So, sociology as a subject, it got created in 1839. All these subjects are there before sociology. So, sociology is referred as the youngest social science. It is the latest social science. So, why, what was the need to create sociology is, if you take anthropology, it is dealing only with certain kind of tribal and primitive societies. If you take political science, it is studying only the political systems. If you take philosophy, it is studying only the aspects of imaginary thought, religion and all that. If you take economics, it is dealing everything in a way of consumption, production, distribution, like that, completely associated with materialism. If you take history, it is studying what has happened in the past. Okay? And if you are taking psychology, it is studying the aspect of an individual's mind and behavior. So, every subject is having an in-depth understanding of that subject alone. But, as a person, we have an influence of many things. So, when we want to understand why something is happening to us, we try to search for reasons in every subject. And no one subject was able to tell the reasons for why Europe was changing in 1800s. Why exactly the changes had happened? Why did they decide to go and colonize other people? Why did their religion change? Why did, they, why did they start questioning their kings? Why did they create the French Revolution? So many reasons as to what are all the pre-conditions pre which all had happened. It is motivating them. So suddenly some changes are happening to them and they are not able to understand because no existing subject is giving them a holistic picture. So, the need to create a subject which will have an idea of every other subject and its specialization into it had helped to create sociology. So, these six subjects, the people from these six subjects, they have contributed or the person who created sociology, name is Gust Comte. August Comte. He is a person from France. Okay, he is a French person. And he created the word called as sociology. He created the subject basics for sociology. Okay, so he is referred as one of the founding fathers of sociology. So, August Comte, so now when you see, you would have often seen that in Indian society, we have a habit to refer to a person by their first name. So, imagine a person has two names, your name and your initial or your name and your surname. How do people usually want to call you with your first name? This is how they call. But imagine whenever you see a cricketer person's name, printed on their t-shirts. What is the name that they put there? How does a tennis star put his name? You are saying, you don't say, you are saying Federer. You say Alcaraz. You are not saying Roger always. 
when will you say roger when you know him personally or you are like a big big fan then you will not say fedra or you'll say and similarly when you print your um, tickets that is your imagine that you're flying and you have a ticket your boarding pass in your boarding pass what comes first what comes first in your passport the surname comes first your surname or an expansion of your surname or your initial expansion that is what will come first then only your name will come then your middle name will come that's how it is there okay so if you take your so why is that so there is a universal way of referring to a person usually we have the habit that we will refer in world level second name is what people will be using surname is what they will be using so when we say we will always say comte we need not write august comte so we should know august comte when we will put the first name is more than one person is there in the first same name then we will use karl marx we'll say marx only there's only one marx rest other people only will use the name max weber we will only say weber Emile Durkheim. We'll only say Durkheim. Syllables of names, all the names. But then we will be using in the paper also. We will be writing the second name. So when we use sociology, we refer usually the second name of the person. So it is enough if you write the second name. Ma'am, if I write the first name, is it wrong? It's not wrong. You will not have the time. First, yes, you will not. you will not know the first names of many people because why he wrote in french we translated into english then it has come in our ncert then we are studying it already some 100 transitions has happened and what we get is and then we are wanting to write in the paper so originally what he wrote we have to go and refer to his that itself it has over a period of time we are not we were not in the internet world no where everything was digitized and kept so half of it is transfer 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 and finally we have got something so it is enough if you write the second name if you write the first name usually it is not needed clear so we are referring comte as one of the founding fathers so he was trying to find out he so now you should imagine right someone is creating sociology that means he should be in other subjects then only he'll create no so he studied philosophy he studied economics he studied law and then he created sociology because he should have done his undergraduation in one of the previous subjects right then only you can create something new when you are a creator when you are a thinker that's how you will be creating correct so he has had his base in everything and studying all those subjects he's trying to find out why my society i am in france french revolution has happened already i am born after the french revolution i'm thinking why it, why did our my my ancestors have now like how we think no why did our guys have to fight with the british will we be fighting now we were fighting with the british so when uh, prime minister rishi sunak when he became the prime minister there was a lot of uh, you know discussion uh, once we were ruled by british now we are ruling the british like this all so why exactly do we feel like that so we were not there but by understanding the experiences which all our grandparents or something which you have watched in some movie or from that all we are taking our experience oh maybe it was like that maybe it was like this then whatever we have studied in our school textbooks history all that we are making one imagination and we are putting and with that we are getting an idea so imagine comte also would have been like that no he did not experience the french revolution but he is born after the french revolution he seeing so many changes so he is trying to understand why it happened how it happened and all that and he is searching the existing subjects he is like not one subject is giving him a comprehensive answer so he decides i have to create something and he decides to create something new and that's how he wants to start with taking contributions from every other subject which was existing before sociology and he happens to be one of the founding fathers all right remaining other people are all there in our syllabus so we have studied this one person now and why did we study this one person to understand what exactly are
subjects which have created sociology okay so what did we have from each of these subjects sociology has come obvious what unit 6 unit 7 unit 8 unit 9 unit 10 it has to be from all these subjects here okay so now come to your right there only in that thing and then you can come to your original page okay so economics is unit 6 okay anthropology is unit 9 political science is unit 7 philosophy is unit 8 history paper 2 a2 psychology part of unit 4 thinkers so 2013 till that the syllabus was not included later in 2013 it got included okay so now you understand how it, so which subject has created sociology which subject has contributed to creating so what we have done one one paragraph we have taken from one one subject and we have created one so now you understand how sociology helps you sociology is like the optional general studies because in general studies what happens history is there geography is there society is there polity is there governance is there uh, bilateral is there agree is there everything will be there in sociology also why whatever influences us whatever is a part of us it will all be sociology only no everything is influencing us we are creating many things we are using many things so obviously that will get included in the syllabus that is why we have a base in everything we will have a little bit of an idea about so it is like a it's not like a mixture what happens what is the difference between a mixture we eat mixture no there will be long there will be long long then there will be ground nuts then be there will be orange things there will be green things so many things five six items will be mixed cashew nuts will be there so what happens i can segregate every element of a mixture i can put all the round together long together ground nuts together because we'll pick and eat like that only no right but what happens when it becomes a fusion it blends it's like you're creating a milkshake it becomes like that so sociology is a fusion it's not a mixer it's not something like little bit economics has came economics comes it gels it gels with sociology it becomes an integral part of sociology that's how it has become are you getting it okay now you go to your original page original page means the first notes that you were writing unit 6 paper 1 unit 6 it is influence of economics isn't it so economics and sociology so what do we have here what is the weightage the weightage is 20 to 30 marks how does this get interconnected <coughs> paper 2 c3 what is c3 industrialization and urbanization what is the weightage of this 
again in paper 2 weightage of this unit is 20 to 30 grams. Next unit 7, unit 7, unit 7 is what? Political science from political science, so politics and society. So, what is the weightage? Again, same only, 20 to 30 marks. So, in paper 2 what it is? C4 and C5, okay. So, C4 is again politics here, it is called as politics here and C5 is called as social movements. Social movements. So, what is the weightage here? 20 to 40 more weightage. <coughs> Next unit 8. Unit 8 it is religion. So, from we have in the syllabus is religion. Thirty to forty marks, paper one. And what it is in paper two? some portions in C4 from politics and some portion in C7 is also there, okay. So, paper 1 some words all is there, no. In paper 2 it is getting scattered in 3 units. So, in B6 also it will be there, in C4 also the word will be there, in C7 also the word will be there. So, similar words in different portions we will study it together, okay. So, what is the weightage here? Weightage again. Next unit 9. So, from anthropology we have taken this family, marriage, kinship. Please note the word kinship. Kinship, kin means relative. How do we get our relatives from our family? How, how is the family getting created? Either the family in which I am born or the family which I get because of my marriage. Okay, so they are interrelated. The word kin means relative. Fine. What is the weightage? Again, 30 to 40 marks weightage. And in paper 2, as such, we are having the word family that is in B5. Similarly, influence of anthropology in sociology, there is a word called tribal communities in India, it is B3. So, this is family, 
we'll call it short fmk okay family marriage kinship Okay, so what you'll remember where I have not written the name in same name only is there. Okay, religion here also there also it is written as religion only, or it is written family marriage kinship. There it will be called like one of the words will be there as the header in the syllabus. Tribes is the word. Now remember, world tribes and all we don't have as question only Indian tribes. And in tribes also names of every tribe and all we need to know overall what is happening with the challenge to tribe. Problems of tribes like that only we are having in the syllabus. All right, okay. Then last unit for this, what is the weightage? Same weightage. Okay. Now in this, remember, family marriage kinship will be say thirty to forty marks. Tribes alone will be twenty to thirty marks. Unit 10, exclusive, what is changing the world, what is changing in sociology, it is called a social change. Okay, so this is more associated with current related things, that is uh, how will people change because of education, how will technology change the society. How will law change the society like that? What is happening to us? What are all the changes? This is more like dynamic aspect that we have. So this also a decent way to 30. One year alone, the mark went up like anything for this unit, only one year. So if you analyze from 1995 till 2022, only one time beyond this mark range it has gone. Okay, so average if you see it is this is the range that it is at, okay. And in paper 2, social change as C1 and C7. Already C7 we have seen under religion, some portions there it came, some other portions will come directly under social change. Okay, so current issues and all will come. So this social change is the same like how you have in paper 1. C7 is challenges to Indian society. So this is more like challenges. Problems, it is like problems. So these days we are getting 30 to 50 marks from here in paper 2. like violence against women, climate change, environmental degradation, ethnic conflicts like Manipur violence, no like that, ethnic conflicts, caste based conflicts, deprivation in the society, all the things which are stopping the progress of Indian society, challenge to Indian society is mentioned there, clear? So we are going to do a recap of what we have studied till now. Just go through again, take your same thing again. So I am going to repeat it, just the order I am going to repeat it. Unit 1, Unit 2, Unit 3, Unit 4, they are standalone units, that is they are exclusive units. Paper 1 alone they will be there. In that most important unit till then is unit 4. Unit 4 mark that comes from that is 50 to 80 mark. Unit 5, paper 1. Unit B2, 
of paper 2, caste system, unit B4 of paper 2, social classes in India. Next is overlapping subjects from other GS like subjects what has come to sociology based on that. Unit 6 economics, paper 2 is C3 industrialization and urbanization. Unit 7 politics, paper 2 C4, C5. C4 is politics in Indian society and C5 is social movements. Unit 8 is from philosophy, religion. Paper 2 it is B6, religion in India and some portions in C4, some portions in C7, wherever the word has got repeated. Okay. Next one. From anthropology, family, marriage, kinship, unit 9 and in paper 2, B5 and B3 tribes. Then unit 10, social change. Paper 2, C1, similar words and C7, what are the issues to social change? Okay, so these are all the list, right? Now in paper 1, like we had some exclusive units, no? 1, 2, 3, 4, not interconnected. Like that in paper 2 also we are having not interconnected, exclusive paper 2. Exclusively for paper 2, unit A, in this A1 is Indian thinkers, Indian thinkers. They have given us three Indian thinkers. Three thinkers they have given. Unit A2, unit A2, it is Indian history. Already you remember in that circle diagram, we said something has come from history to sociology. From history to sociology, we are having included in paper 2 syllabus only. It is not there in paper 1 syllabus. Paper 2 syllabus. Colonial India, freedom movement, social religious reform movement, like that some words have got included. Okay. So, A2 is exclusive, Indian history's influence. Indian history also, mostly modern India, colonial India. So, this is exclusive, okay. Continuation in exclusive. B1. B1 is from agriculture syllabus. Land reforms, land tenure systems. How it is influenced. So, Zamindari, Mahalavari, Rayatwari, like this, some words and all you studied in history, no? Something vague memory you will be having, right? So, we will be not discussing what is that and all. What is, how did it change India? How did it, how did the Indian farmers get affected? Like that we will be studying, okay? So, certain things, it is like more related to agri that you have here. And apart from this, there is something which is interconnected paper inside paper 2 only. C2. Actually B1 and C2 are interconnected. B1 comes from agriculture and C2 is agriculture, <coughs> agriculture transformation of India. Agri transformation of India.
so we studied static part in the b1 no dynamic part like green revolution what change it created in india rural development what change it created in india poverty alleviation what change it created like that so all transformation to this is mostly to do with rural india e1 and c2 are related to rural india Okay, so exclusive portions. What we are having, like in paper one, we had four units. In paper two also, we are having. What is that? Only there in paper two. Only there in paper two. Not there in paper one. What all is there? A one. That is Indian thinkers. A two. Modern India and its influence. B one and C two. they are both related to agriculture and agricultural transformation of course exclusive you can also include b3 that is tribes already i said under the influence of anthropology and sociology but world tribes i said no it is not there only indian tribes is there that also is exclusive so exclusive means only in that subject in that paper it is there so overall i can connect this is what it is all right so what you will need to remember here Unit one to ten of paper one, ten units are there, and in paper two, what are all the words that you will remember? Unit A, unit B, unit C. A has two, B has six, C has seven. So A one, A two, B one, two, three, four, five, six. C one to seven. Now you check. You check this as I am telling. Check this as I am telling. Okay. Check in your regular notes only. Unit A one of unit A one of paper two. A two of paper two. these are all exclusive portions unit b1 from agriculture b2 caste system b3 tribes b4 social classes b5 family marriage kinship b6 religion c1 social change c2 agriculture transformation c3 industrialization C four politics, C five social movements, C six will be missing. That's exclusive once again. Population dynamics. it's exclusive it's not it only indian population we will be studying okay c6 is population dynamics and c7 is challenge to transformation so have you written everything down so unit 1 2 3 4 of paper 1 is exclusive in paper 2 unit a1 a2 b1 c2 C six and B three also, B three also. You have written it in interconnected way. That is okay because I have connected it to anthropology. Because many things will get interconnected. We have to study tribal marriage. We have to study tribal um, inheritance. It will be connected only. But just keep this at the back of your mind. So rest interconnected. Whatever I am having, 
paper, what are all the interconnections? Unit 5 and B2, B4, unit 6, C3, unit 7, C4, C5, unit 8, B6, C4, C7, unit 9, to some extent B3, is it clear? Unit 10, C1, C3. So, you have 25 units, you have 25 units, in the 25 units only 10 units are exclusive, 15 units are interconnected, that is the reason why we say limited syllabus. One time you read, you just need to change your examples, rest everything is the same, bureaucracy you study here, there it is going to be the same only. Example of world bureaucracy and Indian bureaucracy only you need to write. Okay. Now, what you have to do is, when you go home after class today, that time you check whatever we have said. I will go home and I mean once I am done, I will pass on the syllabus on to the telegram group. And in the syllabus also, I would have colored the syllabus together. Same colors I would have put interconnected units. So, header you see the color. What we have discussed now, it will be there. When you see this, you will be getting it as an idea. That means today your exercise is internalizing the syllabus. Which and which syllabus is getting interconnected? What is the weightage? Now come to the weightage. Okay. What is the weightage? Which are the most important units in paper 1? Unit 4, unit 5. Next, what is the most important unit? Unit 3, unit 10. Okay, so unit 4, unit 5 will give you maximum mark. Next, unit 3, unit 10 will give you the second maximum mark. Okay, similarly in paper 2, where do you get the maximum mark? B2, B2, C3, C3, C4. C7, okay, C6, population dynamics, weight ages 20 to 30 marks. All right. Okay, so till now is it clear? Fine. So we can take a small break now and then which one mark? Okay, sorry. Exclusive park, mark weightage, everything rationally you can put it as 20, 20 marks. It is usually between 10 to 20 marks. 10 to 20 marks. Alright, so we are at 640 till 650, you can 650, you can take a break and then we will get back and we will resume. Alright. So, online students, do you have any doubts? If you have any doubts, you can post it on to the chat box of the host. I will address your queries. If you have any doubts, you can ask. Okay, see this uh, telegram, they have created a channel. This the, when you have taken the admission, 
at that time the coordinator would have sent you an email or in that one link will be there okay if you haven't received that link what you can do is you can meet the optional coordinator tomorrow before class and you can get it added because i myself i'm i'm new to that group so i don't i will not be able to add you as such because i don't have your contact numbers okay so initially you get added to that telegram channel that link will be sent or she will be sending to you if you have taken admissions recently and you are not yet integrated don't worry okay i will give you a hard copy of the syllabus in tomorrow's class and for the other students and uh, like there will be a soft copy sent to you and then we will post it onto the group so take one or two days and get integrated with that particular group after we are all integrated into that particular channel then we will create a separate student group okay there we can keep it interactive whatever the institution does will be a one way communication because that will be the official channel all right so whom you will have to approach regarding that particular telegram group will be your optional coordinator optional online at shankarias.in you can just offline students or online students this is the coordinator's id okay same id only so that email will get triggered to you if not you can just send a you can send a mail to this particular id please give some 12 hours of time because now nobody will be working tomorrow morning when they come only they'll be checking and they'll give it to you so as much as possible she will try to integrate you so it will be done optional online at shankarias.in all right you can please send it similarly those of you who are already in that group no who are already in that particular channel you can please pass on that uh, coordinator's uh, what is that username so that the other people can dm to that person also and then you can get it i am not having it because this phone is connected to this i am not having my phone right now okay so telegram don't worry i'll give you a hard copy of the syllabus or you will be getting a soft copy don't worry about that this is what will be there in that also okay recording stopped for paper 1 12th standard two books for paper 2 recording in progress and then you will be getting a printed material so this printed material i'll tell you the sources of the printed material so that you are understanding the importance of that printed material okay so printed material there are three books so two books for paper 1 and one book for paper 2 okay so these two books that you get it will be like unit 1 to 5 it is in one book unit 6 to 10 is in another book so it depends upon how they printed this year as well so just ensure that you are getting 10 units together all right and in paper 2 all the two units are i mean all the three units are printed together in one particular book all right so now from where is this printed material made so actually there is a thinker called haralambos world level thinker so this thinker has written a book on fundamentals of sociology and earlier this book was co-authored by a person called hild and in student language they you call it as orange haralambos so it's somewhere around 500 pages that used to be the case okay then the revised edition came revised edition the co-author is different the co-author is holborn and number of pages new recent researches etc have come in 
so it's referred as the blue harilum bose okay so the source from this has been used so what all has been used from blue harilum bose is unit 3 research methodology this we, when i do it in class it will be done from blue harilum bose so i'll either be doing it in class or it will be used as a part of your material so one way or the other from the book whatever is important it will be taught to you okay so what is your duty is you just religiously follow that material and certain mandatory books i will tell you to read so mandatory is to read the ncrt go through the ncrt why i should go through the ncrt is ncrt when i read no i get a flow in that particular subject i get that works with the subject needs so to understand about that we need to have a flow and then many books are there for this particular paper one. Every book to study in three to four months, they are not expecting us to do PhD in sociology. They want us to write a competitive exam and to clear. So be practical. What is needed for the exam, we are going to read and that alone if you do, it is more than enough. So first, you try to get maximum from the sources which are available to you. So these two books important things from these two books have been incorporated in your textbook the printed textbook that you are going to get okay then there is another book by an author called as anthony giddens so another author called ritzer okay then for unit 4 sociological thought from IGNU, BA Sociology, what is needed and from another book, Sociological Thought by Franz Abraham and Henry Morgan. So this is what has been used to create that book. Similarly, certain new topics, certain examples for those examples, current affairs, whatever is there from the newspapers, because uh, like some words are there, they are very highly correlated. Like I might not have the word gig economy and all written in these by these people, but these are contemporary words. So from the newspapers, certain things. So in your textbook, at a given some box items, we called as points to ponder, points to remember, like that. Similarly, from these textbooks, at the end of your book, there will be some quotes. These quotes will be like what you can practically remember in the examination out of the original sources written by these scholars. That is Marx, Dirk, Him, Weber and all from their original writings, one sentence, two sentences which can be reproduced onto the paper that's given to you. Okay, so your duty is to use the book and maximize the output onto the paper. Again and again and again to search multiple sources and please don't waste your time. So I am not telling you don't read any book, okay. What it is is first when you read this itself, it's something like a compilation where everything whatever is important has been taken and it is simplified and it is given to you. So if you read this, it is as well, it is good like as if you are reading the entire, all these authors, it is equivalent to that. So when someone asks you in the UPSC, in the interview, what did you study for sociology? Please don't say I studied printed material. I want you to tell these names. Are you getting it? What are the sources that you have referred? I have referred the NCRT. I have referred the IGNU material. And I have referred selective portions from these authors. This is what you are going to tell. Because that is what is the reality. It is a compilation made from that. Okay. One student in five months time. It is not possible for you to read so many books, okay. So from that books, the synopsis is done. But if you are a person who likes reading and you are not aspiring for 2024 and you want to appear for 2025, you have, you are wanting to do a full fledged because students will come from different kinds of backgrounds. So if you are a person who wants to read, my suggestion would be, if you are a person who is not so good with English, to stick to IGNU BA sociology material alone. 
extra reading if you want to do. Okay, so where will you get it is? It is a free material available given by the government itself. Just put that topic in the syllabus. It will come to the e gyan kosh. Gyan means knowledge. Kosh means it's something like a compendium, like a dictionary. E to say it is electronic in nature. So all the igno material, whatever is the thing, you can flip it, you can download it, and you can keep it. B A level, it is more than enough. And everything in igno and all, you need not read. What is there in syllabus? What is relevant unit in syllabus? If you want to do any additional reading, you can go to that. If your English is good and if you like reading books, then I'll pass on once everybody gets integrated in the Telegram channel. I'll give you the e-books for Harlembers and Holborn. All this I'll give you the e-books. Okay, so you can purchase. I like reading in hard copy, but if you are a person who likes reading in soft copy, from Previous students, they have scanned and they have given it to me, so I can give that to you. That I can pass it on. So if you want to read and you are like, okay, it's not high English and all. It is normal English only. It is understandable English only. It's like if you're watching a normal kind of movie, English movie, how it will be, even without subtitles to understand. Like that, if you take any movie, something like Avatar types. Or something like Mission Impossible types. That level of English will be there in Harlembos. It's not complicated English. It's not like any regular foreign author. But Rich Sir and Giddens is high level. So if you are a person who are a voracious reader and you have a very good language, then you go for Rich Sir or then you go for Giddens. For the rest of the people, if you are not very comfortable with English, stick to Igno. Mandatory, everyone has to read NCRT. Because NCRT writers will only evaluate your paper. Igno teachers and teachers who are in from various universities, they are the ones who are evaluated. So you should get familiar with the language. That is why these books are, could be. So this is for reading. Please understand, reading. Studying is different from reading. Read these books so that you can understand the language, you can understand the flow, how to connect like that. So one or two times when you read, you can study from your material. Okay, ma'am, why can't I first itself read the material? It depends. It depends upon your comfort level. So each student has a different pace of learning. Go with what is your strength. What you are, you only know what you are. Accordingly, you go with whatever. It is there for everyone. Now suppose you are a person who is comfortable only in your vernacular language, your regional language, you're not very comfortable in English, at least IGNU level you have to come. Only then we can think. Suppose you're writing the subject itself in another language, then these all conversions will be available, translations will be available in the regional universities. Okay, so accordingly from the regional universities, you can procure the material and you can read it if you're writing sociology in that language, another language. I don't have proficiency in all the regional languages. So you will have to seek help in order to make some translations if you are writing in another thing. I can put you on to people, but this is what it is. Okay. So reading at least this basic thing you have to read. So from these sources only you are having. So if you want to read, read the IGNU, read the NCRT or read Harry Lombos. If your level of English is good, then you can go for Giddens or Ritzer. Franz Abraham and Henry Morgan is not needed because only three or four you, three or four light thinkers are there in that. And from that, I've already made the synopsis and given to you. So extra that book is not needed. This is not needed. Okay, but I've taken, I've told you from where we have taken the book. Fine. Paper two. Already I've told you regarding this all is for paper one. What I have told is for paper one. Okay. Paper two, every unit is one book. Every unit is one book. See, that is the reality. Not here. Every optional subject, that's how it is going to be. Correct. So, your book, whichever you are having, it is from various sources. So, I am going to tell you the sources.
Yogendra Singh modernization of Indian tradition. M. N. Srinivas. Cast. So many books on caste is there. So from most of the books, whatever is important from his writings, because we get at least 20 to 30 marks from his writings alone. So that has all got incorporated. So three to four books on caste, caste and change, caste and its 20th century avatar, like that from that all it has been taken. Then Rajni Kotari. Caste and politics. Social movements by Gansham Shah and social movements by MSA Rao. Then Igno BA and certain elements like democracy and development, there is some words like that. So for that I have used MA, MA sociology. And because there are a lot of contemporary perspectives, that is current affairs like that, sociology perspective, there is some magazine which we follow for sociology, okay. Economic and political weekly, economic and political weekly, so economic and political weekly for this 1990, 1955 to 2021, all the relevant syllabus articles, I have given you synopsis of every article which is there, 6 page, 7 page in 1, 1 paragraph. It is there behind each and every unit. Suppose if you take A, A1 and A2, behind that whatever is from this weekly, that is synopsis is given at the back of the book. Okay, then B. B1 to B6, after that in that relevant portions whatever is there, synopsis in one paragraph. So EPW is also done, okay. Then seminar, so seminar is like a, it is like monthly there will be a seminar which happens in Delhi based on certain issues because uh, certain issues like uh, tribal rights like that and all will happen. So after the seminar gets concluded, the speeches of the different people who have given regarding that topic, it will be available on the seminar website. So that is also relevant for us, at least 4 or 5 units, it is overlapping with our syllabus. So from that also the content has been taken to build the material, okay. So seminar is also used. So from all these sources that material is being created. So everything that is needed for the syllabus, it will be there. Beyond that, whatever current affairs we are going to do, we will be doing it in the class, okay. So it is like 18 years of work has gone into giving you that compilation. So it is a lot of work, okay. And so I want you to use it. Ma'am, what to study, what to study, kindly do not ask. You have everything you need. Use that, okay. You are able to understand. So more than this, you do not need anything else to clear the exam. What you have to do is you have to study this and present it onto the paper. That alone you do. That is possible to do. Go in the right direction, you will be able to clear. That is all is needed. So your effort is listen to the class, follow that, make notes out of it 
and go in a particular way. Okay, so what way you have to use the material that is given to you. So you understand from where all it is taken, fine. So how to go by, how to read. How to read, okay. How to read and then how to study, alright. So first is, you will take a topic in the syllabus. Take a topic in the syllabus. So how we will go? As per the class, however it is happening, you will take a topic in the syllabus. Once that particular topic is completed, then you take that topic and that topic go through the NCRT. For example, say there is a word called as modernity and sociology. Like that there is a word. It is a word in your syllabus. If I take this word, first in class what all we have discussed, then that same thing what is there in the NCRT. Which NCRT you have to go? If I am reading, paper 1 means paper 1. 11th standard NCRT, see the index page. First understand one thing, NCRT is not written for UPSC syllabus. NCRT is written for 11th standard or 12th standard child. That means everything that you have in your syllabus will not be there in NCRT. So full full NCRT and all you need not study. This is the same rule even in your general studies. Ma'am I completed 8th standard NCRT in geography. topic, that topic, whichever NCRT is relevant, whichever textbook is relevant, you have to go through like that. Do not do book by book. Take a topic, all your sources, consolidate. That is how you have to go. That way only we will be able to clear an exam. Okay? It is not like we are writing any answer for a given question like what we did in university. So this, that preparation way should be a little customized to that particular exam, okay. So you will go through the same topic in the NCRT, check if it is there in the NCRT. Suppose it is not there in the NCRT, directly go to your material, read it from the material. In case material means what? The printed note. Suppose your material is getting delayed or whatever you are not, now class is happening. Then you can use the same thing IGNU or you can use it in Harold and Bush, whatever, okay. So until you get it, you can go through. So IGNU is always fail safe. You can use the IGNU for reading. For conceptual clarity, it is very, very good. You can use it, okay. So again in IGNU, that topic, where it is present in IGNU, just put modernity and sociology, IGNU sociology. Put it like that, you will be getting a PDF. That PDF alone you read, relevant headers alone you read. Go by the class flow, whatever it is happening. So once you are done with this, then check the PYQ. So where you will get the PYQ, I will give it to you. I will give it to you in your telegram. Unit wise, every unit, what are the topics from 97, no 95 till 22, I will consolidate unit wise and I will give it to you. So once you are done with that, you will go through the PYQ, okay. Once you go through the PYQ, you will understand what is the type of question they are asking from what I have studied. Once you see that, then you have to make notes. So how many years PYQ that you have to check and all, when we do this in class I will tell you. So initially I will help you with uh, how to answer questions and all that and then I will also help you with some last 3 years PYQ, I have done it for the test series students. So that PYQ I will give it to you, okay, unit wise as in when we are completing some kind of model answers for each and every unit, you can just keep checking that so that you understand how to write, okay. So once you do consolidate it. So ma'am how is it different from my class notes? So I have a class notes, I am studying it, I have to use both the sources 
and I have to put it in one place and key. That's called as consolidated notes. You have to handwrite your consolidated notes. Only then it is going to be helpful for you. Okay. So how much to consolidate? What to consolidate? Initially, your consolidated notes might be a little big. So keep it maximum, not more than four pages. Four pages means one side of the paper is called as page. Not more than four pages for a topic. But by the time we come to exam, next year when you are writing mains, you have to further cut it down and make it as one page. Okay. So first when you are making, you will not know what to make, what not to make and all that. So how to identify what is most important based on your class notes itself, what is most important only we will be discussing in the class. Additionally, whatever it is there, when you see the PYQ, you will know that more what all you are going to consolidate, you consolidate it. And then you will be having mentoring sessions. So when you come to your mentor, you can show your notes. Okay, show your notes, what, whatever doubt you are having, you can get it corrected. I will also try to show some examples of how to do consolidation in the class. Alright, so that you are going from the beginning in the right track. So it is better to do unit wise consolidated notes rather than line by line. So once a unit is completed, then you start studying for the unit and then you start consolidating for the unit. Once you finish your note consolidation, then you have to study. Study from your consolidated notes. Then after you study from your consolidated notes, I will keep test for you. So once I complete a unit, I will give you 10 days time to study for that unit. Then you will write a test on that unit. You will in that 10 days time or 12 day whatever time that is going to be there. Once every unit is done, from then you can imagine 10th day you will be having a test. You yourself go in that direction so that you have a plan. Okay. So you complete that. Then you write the test. In the test also we will be going by a particular model. What model we will be going is? We will be keeping the test during the class hours either in the beginning or in the end. Okay, Either we start with the test or we conclude with the test. And in the test, first you will be writing 1 hour 3 questions, 1 hour 4 questions, 1 hour 5 questions, 1 hour 6 questions. So by the time you come to March, 1 hour you will be writing 6 questions and you will be ready for mains. It can't be done that in 1 hour initially itself you can write all 6 questions. So we will go step by step. If you can write more, no problem. Accordingly, you reduce the time. Okay, But when you are starting, this itself will be like slowly if you come, I will take you on. Fine. Then you write the test. Get your paper evaluated. Once you get your paper evaluated, you will know whether your note is sufficient to write the test or not. Whether more you have to study or whether your revision is proper, everything you will understand in the beginning. Then accordingly, the next unit you do. Proceed. Keep on proceeding like this. So, if you do like this, by March you will be able to complete everything one round of writing test. Studying, revision and writing test you will be completed. You will finish it and then you will be going for the prelims. This is how you will be going. Is it understood? So, what is the way to read? Topic, notes, then I am going to read my standard textbook and then I will see what all is the previous year question which has come from that. And then we will consolidate the notes. After we consolidate our notes, then we will be writing the test. From the test, we will get some kind of a feedback. Based on that, we will add or whatever extra points we are getting, we will, you can, you can even keep sticky notes onto your notes. So that additionally, anyway, always it will come. So just keep adding on to your notes. And then you will have one round everything ready with you. Upgrade, we can do it after prelims. So now your basic content, this is what you have to do. This is the way to proceed. Now you can change anything. Ma'am, I am going to follow this guide, that guide. Any guide is not going to be a replacement for any standard textbook. Okay. So any guide that you do should be done only after you finish your fundamentals. Ma'am, in university I studied first from guide only. I have written exam. This is not. That is you will pass prelims. You might clear mains. But you will not survive in the interview. Fundamentals have to be strong. And to make the fundamentals strong, you will need 5 to 6 months. Invest this time in this. It will never fail you. Go in that path. It will take you to a desired place in the rank list. 
and then this work that you do know it will help you in your bureaucracy also because you will be detail oriented you will be structured and they want that kind of people there it's not a joke we are preparing for a marathon so we have to put effort for a marathon there is no easy way everything i want i will not work for it means it will not come now some sometimes what happens is we start referring to notes which are made by other people ready made notes are available and we study from the ready made notes it might help some students who are very smart to do it but if you are able to use those kind of notes and write well i don't however you do finally i want you to clear that's your job i'll tell you one way you go in that way if you want to customize your way you are all adults you have the freedom to do whatever you can do it but ensure that whatever you do you use your time productively that means when we are here that two and a half hours that two hour 20 minutes it is like meditation it is like self discipline we will put in our best then what comes let it come so that attitude of sitting listening writing religiously doing the follow up is what is going to help us to build a some some kind of a skill and that we will do okay and then rest of the time when we are outside the class we are friends right when we are inside the class we are different people all together so let us keep that sense of discipline in whatever we are doing all right okay so this is what you have to do in terms of the way to do your preparation all right now certain tips i have for you to help you to absorb whatever we are doing in the class okay first is as far as possible within the first one week or 10 days try to identify which pen suits your writing and i want you to use that pen only as far as possible from writing notes to writing test to writing your mains so that you get adapted to that diameter you get adapted to holding the pen and writing it no one one pen for one one class so take your time and identify which suits your writing so i think you can take time till your first test also if you are not very comfortable if you are very confused give it once a person looks into the paper we'll be able to tell you whether it is suiting your writing whether you are able to write fast all this you will be able to get okay fine so this is something which you can try you can use ball pen ink pen gel pen you can use any of these three sorts of pens and paper quality will be good don't be scared that it will smudge if or what if it is raining they will keep the paper safe okay so no problem about all that they will keep it safe and we avoid using pencil in the original paper because when we write and when they evaluate no it will be at least 40 45 days time so until maybe my paper comes in so there is a high chance that the paper or the pe pencil thing will smudge or it might become little little hazy to read so as far as possible we try to avoid pencil and blue ink or black ink is preferable you can use either of these things and we avoid red and green even for underlining we avoid red and green to some extent even pink we avoid okay because usually evaluators will be using these colors so use blue and black only alternatively if you want to use it for headers or whatever often only one pen we will be writing because we will not have time to complete only that only we will underline that only we will circle everything we will do it in that one okay so this is the so from the beginning try to identify uh, which is suiting you and you can take some time to do that all right next is um, ensure that before you come to class and when you are coming when you are in the class you are having that proper concentration so for getting that kind of a concentration to sit continuously so most of you in college maximum your periods will be like 50 minutes 55 minutes and then there will be a change of the subject some others who might be in work they will take breaks in between but here we are not having the freedom to do that so to some extent because it is optional we are having a little uh, 
something which is new to many of you. We are trying to give a break after one hour, 20 minutes, one and a half hours like that, okay? So in order to sit through that particular time, first concentrate on taking some deep breaths before you start the class. Ensure that every morning when you get up, irrespective of what time you are getting up, try to build some kind of activity wherein you start brushing with the alternate hand as well. That means if you, you regularly brush with your right, apart from brushing with your right hand, brush with your left hand also. So it will activate the other part of your brain as well. You will become more focused. Do that religiously. Do that every day. It is a small activity, but two to three months, you will develop a little better habit. Avoid eating very heavy, oily food in the night. Tra take proper proper care of your diet because your BMI also has to be less than 30. Usually what happens is in the process of preparation, people tend to put on a lot of weight. So it's important to take care of both your physical health and your mental health when you are in your preparation. Avoid all people who demotivate you. You don't need those people. Two years, you don't need them. Whoever it is, you don't need that people. Switch off all the people who try to pull you down. That's the first activity. Your school people, your college people, they might be earning more than you. They might be earning less than you. They might have every facility more than you. You might have something more than them. But for getting what we want, we have to go for something much bigger. So for that, don't try to make any comparisons to people who are not in the field. Similarly, even people who are in the field, everyone has a time. The shell of an egg breaks only at an appropriate time. Everything has a time. Everyone's learning pattern is different. So you are, you need to identify yourself. You need to work with your strengths. You need to manage your weaknesses. I can't sit for one and a half hours. Means it's my weakness. I have to sit. I can't walk away from a PM meeting. I'm not able to converse properly. That means, yes, I have, an, I have a way to work. I will try. I will try. There's no need for being very fluent and all that. If you are able to communicate and another person is able to understand, that itself is, that itself is a very good thing. Okay? And whatever happens, when you come to class, everything else should be forgotten. Class will be bliss. And as far as possible, we'll all know a lot of things. But when we try to listen, we'll remember the Buddha's years. So many things we know, new perspectives we'll be getting and that will come to us only when we listen. So sometimes we know things already and we are very agitated and we are very restless. But service will come to us only when we are ready to take it. And when will we be ready to take it? Beyond being the status of going and becoming a bureaucrat, at the end of the day, I'm here to serve the people. My job is to be a public servant. That means I have to be ready to listen to the requests of the people. So that attitude will not come when I go for the interview. I have to build that attitude all through this one year, two years, whatever I'm, I am here. So that's what you will need to build in terms of molding for your personality. And last, we will try to also build a hobby. A hobby which is beyond your reading, which is something which is helping you to put in your detailed application form next year. If you don't have one, start picking up one in the next one year. Something which you will do at least once a week <coughs> or follow the 18 minute rule. Every day, 18 minutes, you invest in something which is beyond this study. It could be reading beyond the textbook. It could be a reading habit. It could be something that you're going to make. Invest for yourself. Give yourself that me time, 18 minutes a day. And that will translate to a substantial amount when you take in the end. It will look like initially it is too much, but then you need to invest in terms of creating a hobby and that cannot be done in the last minute. Okay? So this, with this thought, I'm leaving you. Tomorrow, 5 o'clock, we'll meet. All right? Thank you. Recording stopped.
Recording in progress.